In this video, we're going to look at how chemists measure equilibrium, chemical equilibrium. And chemists communicate the measurement of chemical equilibrium with this capital K and then a subscript EQ for equilibrium. This is called the equilibrium constant. It's almost like chemists don't know how to spell and they thought constant started with a K. Or it's more likely that capital C stands for concentration, so we've got to pick something else. But anyway, K stands for constant, so this is going to be the equilibrium constant. And very roughly speaking, the equilibrium constant is the concentration of products compared to the concentration of reactants. So it's sort of like a measurement of the balance. If we've got some chemical reaction of A plus B produces at an equilibrium C plus D, it's like, what's our comparative amount of products to reactants? Do we have way more products or do we have way more reactants? So let's just try to think about which one would be which. More products means the top of our fraction is higher, our numerator is higher. If our numerator is higher, that means we get a higher K, higher equilibrium constant. If we have more reactants, our denominator is higher. A high denominator makes the fraction smaller, so this would be a smaller K. So right away you can think, if I've got a really high equilibrium constant, that means I'm leaning more towards the products. And if I've got a really low equilibrium constant, then I'm leaning more towards the reactants. A few things to remember. Um, we're dealing with concentrations, of course. So we said in the last video that the reason we're going to talk about concentration is because a higher concentration increases the chance of an effective collision, which makes the reaction go in a certain direction. So one thing to point out is that if we're measuring concentration, then we are not going to be dealing with solids, because we can't measure the concentration of solids. We are not going to be measuring anything about pure liquids because a pure liquid is 100% of a certain molecule. So we can't talk about concentration with pure liquids either. In fact, if we have either of these, we'll just simply be able to cross them right out from our K. Let's also point out that, as we said in the last video, the equilibrium is going to depend on the temperature because the temperature affects how many collisions are successful. So that means that every K value is going to be unique to a certain temperature. You can't take a K value from 0 degrees Celsius and try to apply it at 200 degrees Celsius. It's going to be different. The equilibrium is going to shift because there might be higher chance of successful collisions on one side or the other due to that increase in temperature. So we need to state the temperature along with our equilibrium constant. Two things that don't matter that K is independent of are catalysts and time. Remember what catalysts do. Catalysts make, and make it easier for a collision to form an intermediate because there, there's an easier possible intermediate. They don't change the percentage of collisions that would be effective per se. They might make it easier for them to be effective but the, the total percentage on each side is uh, it's going to be easier in both directions. Think of it that way. It'll lower that hump. Uh, so remember our reaction coordinate. It may, might take our hump a little lower, but that means it's lower in both directions. So it doesn't matter for our equilibrium. Time either. It doesn't matter if it's going for, been going for a long time or a short time. And once it's reached e equilibrium, it's going to stay at equilibrium at the same equilibrium. And one other note. K is normally stated without units. So it's simply a number, just like a ratio or a fraction. Um, not that it's going to be a fraction, it's going to generally be a whole number, but um, normally in a ratio the units cancel. You'll see that that's not necessarily the case, but we still state it without units. Okay, so what would this really look like? Well, let me, let me beef up my example up here a little bit. I'm going to give some mole ratios. Let's say there's uh, two Bs reacting and there's two Cs produced. And now, what would the equilibrium constant actually look like for this particular reaction? Let's do it down here. So the K equilibrium for this reaction would be the concentration of products. So we've got C and D. 
Uh, you multiply them together, and then the mole ratios we put as exponents. So this would be the concentration of C squared times the concentration of D divided by the concentrations of reactants, so that's A, and then times the concentration of B, and that has to be squared again because of that 2 in front of it. So if you're given these are the concentrations of all four of my entities at a certain temperature, all you've got to do is do this multiply in this fraction to find K. You multiply, um, sometimes raise into the power if necessary, and divide as a fraction. Now in this calculation, I've assumed that all of these entities were aqueous solutions. Let's just suppose that C was actually a solid. Now if C was actually a solid, all we have to do is cross it out. So we don't even have to include C in our calculation. Now we just have the concentration of D divided by the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. So equilibrium constant is really going to be that easy. I also want to point out that this is better than percent yield, or is going to be better. Because you might be thinking, well, why don't you just measure percent yield? If our reaction has progressed 70 percent, then just state that as a percent and be done. But that doesn't allow us to account for what would happen if we start, uh, if we start messing with the concentration. So maybe a reaction is 70 percent progressed, and then I dump some more reactants in. What happens then? And K allows us to do that because we can change the concentration of reactants and see what happens to the other concentrations and see what the effect would be. So this K is the constant that chemists use to communicate equilibrium and how far a reaction has progressed.